Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where last episode we actually did some mining kind of. We uh, intercepted an astro asteroid and redirected it and impacted it into the moon. So uh, that's something anyway. I I'm not sure that it's actually asteroid mining but it's adjacent. Do we have anything in here? Bring a newly discovered class A asteroid into orbit around Kerbin. Actually? Yes. We accept that contract. Do, do an advanced scan with a rover arm of Duna Stone. Plant a flag on Ike. I mean, a lot of this we're not going to do, but a newly dis discovered Class B asteroid into an orbit around the moon? Yes. That sounds good to me. Detect three comets. This will just passively happen, apparently. I guess we'll take that. Why not? Okay, so we've got four contracts here, mapping seven astronaut or asteroids endangering Kerbal. So yeah, this will happen over a long length of time, in theory. It may expire, but if it does, I mean, we don't really lose much, so that's all fine. We need a newly discovered Class A asteroid that we bring into an orbit around Kerbin. Okay. So we could have a very similar redirect... Uh, spacecraft if we wanted to. I feel like I don't want to, though. I think I want to start a new one from scratch here. We could go with, like, a uh, remote guidance unit like this, and then we'd need an advanced grabbing unit on it, obviously. So something like that. We know for a fact that we need more reaction wheel than we had, although it doesn't need to be a huge amount more. So we could have a small inline reaction wheel. That will probably give us enough there. I would also like to have a little bit of RCS in this. Um, these are all gigantic. There we go. That's a bit more like it. And we can just... It, it doesn't really matter too much where we put these, but we can have one of these thruster blocks in theory. And we can have just four of them. Something kind of like this. That's That feels like that's kind of ludicrous. I don't know. Can we get away with three? We can maybe get away with three. Something like that. Then I don't think we want to do ion propulsion for this. So I would like to have a fuel adapter. Not that fuel adapter. Not that fuel adapter. We know which one it is, but I... I well, you know which one it is. Uh, it's this one. I didn't know which one it was. But yeah, it's it's definitely this one. So all I want to put on this then is just like a terrier. So we'll do like a T400. Oh, this is right. We could go with a larger diameter. That is that is a possibility. So this would be like a uh, 32. No, that's too large. Okay, I'm not sure what this is going to, but we need a different fuel adapter. <laughs> Maybe that was going to... I'm, I'm not entirely sure. But we clearly need a different fuel adapter. We want one that will... Actually, we found it previously. I'm quite certain of this. This one. That takes us to T800. Then we want, like, the uh, Rockamax brand adapter, but that would not be fuel adapter. So we're going to need, I think, something kind of like... That's a Kerbidine. Something kind of like... Not that guy. Not that guy. I know it's in here somewhere. Kind of like this. That's really dumb looking. I'm not going to lie. That is incredibly dumb looking. It is a lot of fuel, though. <laughs> Here's a question. Why don't we just go with the previous launched one and make a few alterations? I think that's going to be our best bet here. So we know for a fact that we need a... Uh, a little bit more reaction wheel. We don't really need, per se, any uh, extra fuel here. Is this sticking out the top? No, we're good. Okay. We don't really need, per se, any extra fuel here. Uh, we know that we have plenty of delta. I wouldn't necessarily mind tossing in, like, an additional xenon container, though. Uh, that's a little awkward. Not really what I wanted there. I guess we would split this off here and then put in a xenon container. Of course, we'll need to rebuild our fairing. So we'll delete the fairing for now. 
So that brings us a little bit more fuel. Not that we really need it, but that'll help. And then the reaction wheel will help us stay in position rather than uh, having to thrust limit our electric propulsion system in theory. So that should be fine. Now, note that there's no mining happening here. We're not planning on crashing this asteroid. We're planning on bringing a Class A asteroid into stable orbit of Kerbin, and then a separate craft is going to do the mining at that point. This is just to transport the Class A asteroid. Now, for the Class B asteroid, I suspect we'll need a slightly beefier craft than this. But for now, all we're doing is the Class A. And we know for a fact that this could get the job done as it was. So we're just making some minor alterations here. And I'm just going to build this fairing now. And we'll bring this up to be uh, around here. And then bring it in. Kind of like that. Yeah, that'll do. Okay. So this should probably not be an untitled spacecraft anymore. We'll, we'll rename this to asteroid redirector because i'm extremely creative with these names in this series it seems and we're going to launch this excellent so off we go we're going to intercept this asteroid or an asteroid we don't know which one we're targeting yet we'll figure that out later throttle up sas on and off we go Okay, we're going to head over towards 90 degrees here quick. There we go. And let's make our way out of here. We know that this is pretty overkill, but we also know that our thrust to weight goes absolutely into the toilet. Absolutely into the toilet when we latch on to the asteroid. So this is not as much overkill as we thought it would be. And that's mostly because the electric engines are really only suited, I think, for those Class A asteroids. I think we're going to need beefier engines if we're going to try to move a bigger asteroid than a Class A. So that'll be fine. Apoapsis height is currently 25 kilometers. And we've got about 10 seconds left in our side boosters here. Five seconds left. Okay. Off go the side boosters, and let's just head directly to the horizon at this point. We need horizontal speed. We do not really need additional vertical speed. So this will approximately do. I'm just trying to position us where we want to go. It's much easier with Mech Jeb, but I feel like... I don't know. I feel like MechJeb encourages encourages me, anyway, to be a bit lazy. So I prefer not to use MechJeb. Cool. We can see here time to apoapsis is holding steady. So this is good. Now it's increasing. That's fine. We kind of want it to be increasing at this point. We do not want it to be decreasing. Holding steady is okay. Increasing is okay. Decreasing is not okay. So, we're good with it increasing. 64 kilometer apoapsis height. We've not broken out of the atmosphere just yet. But we have a lot of horizontal speed here. At this point, we can ditch our fairing. And our apoapsis height is about to hit 100 kilometers now. Let's just take it to like 120. That'll do. Okay. So, at the apoapsis here, we can circularize this. This should be very cheap. Oh, yeah. Very cheap indeed. Sounds good. We'll head on over to that maneuver node. We definitely turn a lot faster with the addition of that small inline reaction wheel. And we're bringing a little more fuel as well. So, this will all be just fine. Of course, we're not out of the atmosphere just yet, and we're pointing somewhat awkwardly. <laughs> this is almost maximizing our drag, but good thing that drag doesn't really matter that much at this altitude. It's dropped us down a little bit, but overall not too bad. So we're going to warp over to this as soon as we exit the... 
which will be right about now. And off we warp. Should probably remember to extend our various retractable bits here, including the solar panels and the communications antenna. There we go. We'll get those extended. No problem whatsoever there. And we will begin our burn in 45 seconds. So let's warp forward a little bit here. 10 seconds. And... Burn. And we are in orbit. This is close enough, and at this point, once again, I'd like to slingshot around the moon. That is definitely the most efficient way, or a more efficient way anyway. I'm not really comfortable calling it the most efficient way, but it's a more efficient way to exit the Kerbin system. This timing is definitely a little awkward. I don't want a normal burn in there. I just wanted to move when we were performing this burn. Okay, we need to move this a little bit more. That's a little bit closer. It's not exactly what we want, though. We can save some Delta V here. We know that we can do this. Yeah. About here. 831.5 meters per second. I like it. So this is going to burn basically this entire stage. And that's okay. Ooh, that's a uh, very jittery in physics warp. Good to know. We'll just go ahead and time warp on. Cool. We've got plenty of battery to make this happen, and uh, there's some debris running around out here. We should probably untrack some of that soon enough. But for now, we will just start our burn in about 10 seconds here. Five seconds. And off we go. This is going to burn almost exactly this entire tank. So that's fine. And we'll see after we're done burning this if that's enough. It may be enough. So let's see what we've got here. Two hundred meters per second to go. One hundred. Ooh, lacking seven point three meters per second. Okay. Well, let's finish that off. I overshot a bit, actually. For some reason, I expected this to be a lot lower thrust to weight than it was. But let's just uh, bring this. Actually, we don't need to bring it back. That's completely irrelevant. We're going to just warp over to here. Moon, we are coming for you. Kind of. We're coming for your gravity. We require a little bit of your energy. Not enough that you'll notice, probably, but eventually it would add up, in theory. Gravity assists do take energy from the celestial body in question, so... That's exciting, but it's a very minuscule amount. Okay. So, at this point, we are going to warp to our escape, and we also need to find ourselves a Class A asteroid. Let's go ahead and warp out over this direction while we are waiting. Or while we're searching, rather. Class C, Class B, Class D... There are no Class A asteroids currently visible. There are some Class Bs. But we don't see any Class As. This one just popped in. That's a Class E. And a Class E is definitely not what we're looking for for our first asteroid to mine here. So that's going to... Currently, there are none. Maybe we grab a Class B. We do have a contract for a Class B and a Class A. So, there is that. This one would be into an orbit around the moon, which is fine. Okay. 
I'd really love to see a Class A. I mean, there's not going to be anything new over here. We could just warp up over this way about 30 days. A Class E just popped in. A Class E up here. Okay. Just saw one up here. I think that's another Class E. Class E. Man, I was definitely expecting to see a Class A. <laughs> These are all B over here. Indeed. Class D, Class C. Yeah, I was really expecting to find a Class A. I don't know for a fact that the engines we have on this thing are up to a Class B. But I suppose we could go for a Class B and get that one done anyway. So that would be fine. We could go for, I don't know, like one of these over here that we lost sight of. <laughs> Let's head back to the tracking station for right now. And we're going to need to grab ourselves a Class B, I guess, since we don't have a Class A available at the moment. We will get a Class A eventually. And I don't know that we actually have enough power in this thing to get ourselves a Class B, but we can find out. I mean, I don't actually know how much bigger a Class B is over a Class A. That Class A that we found last time was five tons, which was fairly easily maneuverable. But we'll go ahead and track this Class B, and then we'll fly our asteroid redirector. And let's see about getting ourselves an encounter with this Class B asteroid out over this way. That is this guy, and we'll set that as our target. It will have a Kerbin encounter, or we will have a Kerbin encounter. Interesting. I think it will have a Kerbin encounter. Well, with that in mind, we are quite close to Kerbin, but uh, we could potentially push out our... Apoapsis up over this way and see about an intercept. Okay. I'm, I, don't, I don't care about the scope right now. That's not too relevant, but what we do want is to get this maneuver a little closer. So that's pushing it further apart, and that caused it to disappear, sadly. A bit of a radial burn here. I mean, that's a big relative speed, for sure. I think that this is probably not our best bet right now. Okay, so what if we were to change when we pushed out our periapsis here? Okay. Sooner the better. Sounds good. The major problem with doing a radial intercept here is actually, um, there was a point here where the relative speed stopped going down and started going up. So it's right here. Okay. So what if we were to burn prograde a bit at that point? Maybe a bit radial. Yes. That's looking better. At least a little better. <laughs> Yikes. Okay, that relative speed is going way, way up now. Okay, we can't really get away with, bu with burning any more radial here. Or rather, any more normal. We can burn more radial. That is a, definitely a thing we could do. If we did this here, and a little less prograde, this is actually looking somewhat decent. Okay, that's starting to go back the other way now. So that 
bottoms out at about 22,000 kilometers. And we can burn slightly more radial here. A little bit less prograde. Okay, got to go to mouse scrolling at this point. 700 kilometers. 500. 250. Okay. This is quite a large relative speed differential. There's no doubt about it. But this is, I think, going to be fine. In theory. <laughs> Emphasis on the in theory. Assuming that this Class B asteroid isn't like 50 tons or something. 500 tons. We'll see. So that's only like 56 kilometers away. That's definitely close enough for a get closer burn. Okay, we can get a little closer here. 17 kilometers. Oh, that overshot. Oh, that overshot. Okay, maybe a bit radial. Nope. This is about the best we're going to get. Sounds good. So we'll position for that. There we go. And that burn is going to be in about seven days. That was a little fiddly to find, for sure. There's no doubt about it, but... I mean, it'll do. Our relative speed is going to be up there. So we're going to burn like 1,200 meters per second in total getting to this thing. But I think that's acceptable for now. Actually, we're probably going to be a little more than that, like 1,300 meters per second in total. But that's fine. So we'll just warp forward a little bit here and let's get that burn underway. There we go. I would physics warp the burn. Um, I'm a little concerned about holding this attitude. It looks okay. Yeah, that looks okay. So we will complete this burn. We want this burn to be quite accurate. There we go. What do we got? 56 kilometers and a relative separation that is fairly high here. That's acceptable. So once we arrive here, we will add a maneuver and that'll be a retrograde burn. And actually, we don't really care about the direction of it. We just need this to be like a relative speed of zero. So we're going to go this direction. And drag our relative speed on down. Yeah, this is not the actual relative speed that we're looking for, but this is close enough-ish. We're mostly using that that just for timing. So we're going to go to target retrograde. We don't actually care about this, and we will warp to that burn. Cool. We can see our target speed dropping, our, our target relative speed. And that's exactly what we want. And with this already intersecting with Kerbin's orbit, that's really convenient for us, actually. There's probably a Class A asteroid out here at this point, but eh, we can come back to that contract later. Okay, so this burn will be basically any moment now is fine. We'll just go ahead and burn it now. I don't know what our actual distance is, like 600 kilometers. Okay, let's actually hold off on this and warp a tiny bit closer. In fact... We know for a fact that we can move this, and we would move it to be, like, here. Okay. We'll warp to that. That's about 20 minutes in the future. We can see that we're not very far from Kerbin here. Cool. So we're going to kill our relative speed as soon as we are ready to do this. In about a minute here. Actually, I want to move this just slightly closer. There we go. Now it's in about a minute. We're about 54 kilometers away from this thing. It should be almost visible at this point. I think 50 kilometers is when that happens. So we're going to do 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and burn. We're going to kill our relative speed. And then we're going to have to get closer to this thing, of course. You can see right now we're getting further away. But we will have this burn done very shortly. This doesn't matter here. All we care about is this number hitting zero. 
100 meters per second to go. Okay. Two, one, and zero. Okay. So now we are holding firm about 55 kilometers away from this asteroid. Let's go ahead and point towards the target. It is... Oh, there it is. Okay. Cool. 55.9 kilometers away. And let's get ourselves a bit of a get closer burn. So we're going to bring this up to be, I don't know, maybe like five meters per second. That's probably fine. And we'll just keep an eye on this here. We'll warp in. We'll need to burn target retrograde once we get in a bit. But we'll warp in at 100x. 1000x. Yeah, this is looking good. We're now about 30 kilometers away from this asteroid. 20. 10. Let's back off on our warp a bit. 6 kilometers away. 5 kilometers. 4. 3. 2. Backing off a bit far further here. We're going to flip around to retrograde. I don't exactly know what our closest... Uh, intercept point is here. It's not really saying, but we can see here that we're a bit off and that's fine. We will do one final get closer burn and hopefully we'll actually hit it with that. So we're just coming on in here, 200 meters out, 150 and very soon now is when we're going to want to kill our relative velocity. In fact, I think right now. There we go. Relative velocity killed. And we'll head over towards target. We will arm our advanced grabbing unit. And we're going to head on in towards target at about 5 meters per second for right now because I'm feeling impatient. We're going to flip around to target retrograde because we're going to need to break. And we're going to break soon. 80 meters away. Okay, let's go ahead and bring this down to about one meter per second. There we go. And flip around to point towards target. Like I said, there's not really a point in going to five meters per second there, but I was feeling impatient. We're going to hop on in over this way, and we're about 30 meters away. We'll go to X2 physics warp here. We are now 20 meters away. Okay, so a potential problem here. This thing is occluding our solar panels in its entirety. <laughs> That's exciting. That is definitely exciting. We're just going to rotate it up over this direction. And hope that we're going to be sitting mostly over here. Cool. So now our solar panels have some power flow. It is, however, time to put a cut in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and next episode, we are going to see about what this current encounter ends up looking like. Actually, before we go, we're focusing our view on Kerbin. We need to get this thing into an orbit around the moon. Ooh, this is extremely, extremely radial. Not radial. Radial is not the word I'm looking for. We need a big old normal burn here. Maybe not that big of a normal burn. This is, as it is, more Delta V than we currently have. Okay. Well, that's exciting. We may have to simply content ourselves. As I said, I wasn't sure exactly what the mass of this asteroid would be. It is 25 tons. It's a much bigger asteroid, five times bigger. So we may have to content ourselves right now with just capturing it here, like so. Just doing a very minimal capture. And then we, like, detach this guy, and we bring another tug in. That may end up what being what ends up happening. And we just try to get this as close to the moon as we can, but we'll see. It is time to put a cut in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and next episode, we will work on this capture. 
You can bring your, or rather leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including Kazerol, Sigma162, JJ Gamer, Spartan News, Rose Valentine, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, click the join button down below the video, and as always, I will see you all next time.